LG sent us a new monitor. It's an Ultra Gear 4K, 144 hertz, 160 if you see it, and it's a little under 32 inches. They sponsored us to unbox it, but here's the thing. It's $1,000. That's actually like a pretty good price. Wah. Honestly, at this size, like, you don't get a whole lot better for that much money. Oh. <laughs> It's probably fine. The packaging in these is real good, real robust. The Ultra Gear is pretty much like their highest end line for gaming displays. Um, there's not a whole lot super new or different except for the fact that like the specs are amazing and the price has come down. I'm pretty sure these used to cost more like $1,200, $1,300 if I'm uh, remembering correctly. But let's get it open and take a look at all the new stuff that comes with this one. We've got accessory box. Ooh, let's Real hefty is the power brick in here. Yeah, power brick, all of our cables. Uh, what's this? It is a plastic cover or a clip. Got the stand, well, the base of the stand. They're doing the uh, great thing that I love, which is this toolless design on the bottom. And then boom, now you can screw it down without needing a screwdriver. Here's the rest of the stand. Pretty typical for LG. Oh my God, it keeps getting stuck. Keeps getting caught. Cool. Where's the other guy? Here we go. So all you do, for anyone who hasn't done this, is you just slot that base into the bottom, slots right in, and then you just screw it down. Wow. I actually really like LG's stands. Uh, I wish the legs didn't protrude as much as they do, so they had a bit more desk depth, but uh, honestly, they're pretty good. They're robust. I've never had too much problems with them. They don't like um, there's not a ton of wiggle. They're pretty stable once they're there. So normally there's like a slit right in here in this packaging and then you can just like lift it open, slot it in and pull the whole thing up. I don't think they've done that here. I think this was just ripped uh, when I took it out of the box. Yeah, cause I don't see any other like perforations or anything. So I'm just gonna kind of rip the foam. Other than that though, while it's down here, we've got some good IO. We've got USB-B, two USB-A ports, two HDMI in. I'm guessing they're 2.1 since it's a 4K, 144, 160 hertz panel. Uh, and then a display port in, and then a uh, power cable, uh, and then a headphone jack on the very, very bottom. So it's not the most robust uh, set of USB hub IO that I've ever seen, but it's not bad. It should be enough that you can plug a few things into the back to free up space on your tower, which is always just really handy. I don't know about you guys, but I use a lot of USB powered devices, so I'm always down for more. Uh, I love this classic design of just like popping it in, putting it down, you hear it click, you're good to go, and then you just pull it out of the box. Oh yeah, like I said, it's heavy. Ugh. It's not that bad. I think by the panel itself is like 20 pounds, and then with the stand, it gets a little heavier. Oh my God. I haven't even seen the front and I already like it. It's already great. I'll get out of this stupid box. I just gotta make sure I've got it. Got a nice firm grip on it. Cause yeah, 32 inch display, uh, 16 by nine is a lot of screen space. And they've actually gone like super borderless edgeless too on the sides and the top. Um, and even their, uh, their peel goes all the way to the top. Not a lot of people do this. Where does it start though? I wanna do like a nice clean all the way around peel. So I'm just gonna pick a spot. Oh, it's already going badly because I can't find the start of it. Oh, there, oh, I found it, okay. Oh my God. And then there's a separate piece for the bottom. That's why I was so confused. I thought it started like near the power switch. Oh yeah. Wow. A lot of monitors um, don't come with a peel on the front but they do come packed really nicely. So don't ever worry about it, like getting scratched or damaged in shipping just because there's no peel on the screen. It's totally fine. I actually just went from a monitor of a very similar size. I had a 32 inch 1440p display and that's kind of the very top end of 1440p. I wouldn't get a 1440p screen. Some people would even tell me that that's already too big. It's not enough PPI. But yeah, 4K at like 31 and a half, 32 inches is about 140 PPI. So that should be plenty of pixels for anyone who's gaming at least. If you're into design, you might wanna get a 27 inch, but that only nets you a little bit more. So I don't know. When will we get the modern 8K gaming display? Probably not for quite a while. Um, 
but this thing is pretty sweet. It's got one millisecond gray to gray response time. It's VESA certified at a thousand nits. So we've got HDR 1000. It's also got AMD FreeSync Premium and G-Sync compatible, but it doesn't have an actual G-Sync module. To get the sticker, I think it just has to be compatible. To get the badge though, I'm pretty sure it's gotta be an actual module in there. That might be how they lowered the price a little bit because I think the old models came with G-Sync, but I'm not 100% sure. And that costs like a hundred bucks just to get the module in there. Otherwise, oh, check out the back. I love this like textured plastic on the back. I've seen this on some of the bigger pro arts that have a huge ass display like this one. Uh, it's got a ton of cooling vents all the way around the top, the sides. Yeah, they're even on the bottom too. So you've got plenty of cooling for this thing. And I mean, 4K, especially if you run it at 160 Hertz, you have to OC it to get to that. We'll see if that's like a setting in the OSD or if we have to go into NVIDIA control panel and actually set it. I'm not a big fan of like listing overclockable refresh rates. I think that, you know, you should just list it at whatever it can actually definitely do. Um, but we'll see, see if it gives us issues. Other than that, here's that cable thing. Just clips in and then you do that after you run your cables all the way down the back or whatever. And then you clip them down on here. They'll stay nice and clipped. I'm pretty sure, yeah, so you can swivel. Well, rotate, whatever. You can you can swivel. Oh, can you swivel? Well, not really. Am I gonna break anything? I don't think so. Well, you can tilt. There's a fair amount of tilt, and then it's height adjustable as well. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I don't know who's gonna use it vertically. <laughs> if you are gonna put this vertical for whatever reason, uh, make sure to angle it out a bit first, or you're gonna hit the feet and maybe even the desk when you flip it first. Lots of motion, lots of function. I am a big fan of LG's stands. I've got the Ergo up at my desk. Most of the time, I actually really prefer these like straight out the back connectors because sometimes uh, down here, it's hard to see if it's like not on the very bottom and it's in some kind of weird recessed like um, cable or IO area. So I actually typically do like the way LG just puts them up here. However, right now, because there's no swivel, on this guy, or at least not that I can, like, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna break it if I try, guys. So in this case, it's actually kind of tough to get behind there and plug it in. You didn't see this, but like I had to move this monitor over, I had to pull this thing forward, I had to rotate it myself. And when it's a big beefy monitor like this guy, it's not always easy. So we're good though now. Should have power. And then, uh, is that it? Is that it? Hey, it beeped. What? This thing's not supposed to have speakers, but it can beep. Oh my God. I am such a sucker for RGB. I really like, yeah, I really like how they've incorporated the lights on this one. And they're nice solid diffusion bars. They're not like individual LEDs. It's pretty sweet. Whenever you get a new display and you set it up, always go into display properties. Always make sure it's actually got the right everything set. You might be running at a low refresh rate. You might not be in the right resolution. But today, looks like we're good. 4K, 144 hertz, 8-bit color. Um, Andrew says it's pretty dim, and I agree. This is like not very bright at all. So let's go to settings, picture adjust, brightness. Oh, 10? What? Yeah, we'll increase energy consumption. I know that. Give me so much more brightness than 10. How's like 50? 50 is yeah, pretty standard. Yeah, okay. 50 is pretty standard on most monitors. If you go all the way to 100, you might start blowing stuff out and it doesn't look very good. Um, if we had HDR on, this would probably lock to whatever and you wouldn't actually be able to adjust brightness. But uh, let's see what else is here while we're in the OSD. Cool. So we have language, hexagon lighting. I don't know if you can hook this up to your computer and run RGB software on the lights, but at least you get a few different varieties. There's like red, cyan and white and then cycling and you can also turn it off if you really don't want it there but i do so blue or purple it is game mode game adjust overclock oh overclock okay game adjust overclock after the monitor reboots change the maximum refresh rate in the gpu control panel so we're going to turn that on oh but you lose adaptive sync while it's on maybe interesting is it going to work is it happy Keep changes. Hey, now we've got 160. Here, I'll drag this window over. Yeah, there we go. 4K, 160 hertz refresh rate. It's only 8-bit color, but like the reality is 
most things are 8-bit color. Um, as much as I like having 10-bit on my monitors personally, I guess HDR might start to use it, but I think this thing only has about 24 or so uh, dimming zones. So even though it gets to 1,000 nits, I don't think the HDR experience is gonna be all that crazy. It's a nano IPS panel, so unfortunately it's not like mini LED or OLED, so you're not gonna have all of those really small dimming zones. Um, or if you do get them, it's, it's, like, it's a lot more work and money. So for example, uh, Sony's InZone M9, it has 96 dimming zones on a 27 inch 4K screen. So you really have to just ask yourself whether you want a really good HDR experience or if you need this much screen space. Personally, I like having this much screen space. I'm on an ultra wide now instead of uh, just regular 16 by nine, but it's still like a 32 inch ultra wide. 24 or 26 dimming zones is still a lot better than like a six zone edge lit dimming zone panel. Um, then you just kind of get these vertical lines with 24 or 26, you're at least gonna get some squares. So it's not too bad. Like let's do, let's turn HDR on. Okay, it does do 10 bit. Yeah, as long as HDR is turned on. Yeah, there's not a lot of ton of games that I actually use. Oh, getting some flickering. Ah, did you see that on camera? I had uh, an Asus gaming monitor years ago, and I would it, it's it's certified at 165 hertz overclock. But the problem is, once you overclock it, you can get instability. And so it's why I'm not a big fan of monitor companies saying like, oh, but you can OC it to like 160. You can, but it's gonna vary panel to panel on how well that actually works. Some panels it'll run just fine, but I guarantee you on some, you're gonna get weird flicker every now and then, or it'll just have like some kind of issue. Maybe your screen will go black, maybe you'll get a little bar or whatever. As you can see, you can kind of count the dimming zones as you move across. You can see the black parts of the screen light up. They're not terrible, like it's definitely better than uh, like a six zone column monitors. Those are kind of bad, but uh, it's probably not gonna mo make for the most like amazing pinpoint HDR experience. That's probably why the price is only around $1,000. So it's good news and bad news. Good news is gamers can finally start to afford really high-end 4K displays. The bad news is you're gonna be using IPS, which is kind of older technology at this point. So, I mean, you take your own money and then decide on what you want. Me personally, I kind of need that OLED experience these days. Here it is, Doom Eternal, 4K, 160 Hertz. Uh, we're getting 160, 165 FPS in the menus. 4K is really hard to run. We have like a 3090 in here and like a 5950X or something. Like this is not a low end machine. And yes, I'm set to ultra nightmare. I could turn this down to like medium and we'd get like 200 FPS, but even so, let's go to game slot two. Yeah, see, here's my problem. Look, we're barely in game. There's not a whole lot going on here and we're hitting like 140 FPS. We're not using the full potential of our display because even if it was reaching like 200, 300 FPS, you wanna be going about twice as fast as your refresh rate to really make sure everything's tight and super smooth because it's those 1% lows because that's just an average, right? A lot of our 1% lows are probably in the like, I don't know, 100 range. So every now and then you're gonna see it stutter or dip down to that. And then you're not even, you're really not using your monitor at that point. It's not the smoothest gameplay experience I've ever had because you can get those like 300 Hertz refresh rate monitors now. Um, but in 4K, this thing looks great. It looks super pretty. The colors are great. Can't really complain too much, honestly. And especially at like $1,000 for this kind of experience, I guess they've kind of realized that uh, there's a lot of competition in the display market these days. You know, we've got some HDR footage on screen. It looks pretty good. I know that I'm making fun of the 25, 26 zones or whatever a little bit too much, but uh, the reality is this still looks pretty decent. Some parts are a little more overblown than they should be, but ultimately this is a much better viewing experience than you're gonna get on like a $500, $600, 6 to 12 dimming zone display. Overall, I think the 32GQ950 at $1,000 is a pretty decent buy. You're paying about a dollar per nit, but 4K, 144 or even 160 if yours can OC without any issues, at that price, at that level of HDR quality, it's not bad. I think you're gonna get a really solid gaming experience. And all this shows is how far display technology has come. And, you know, look forward to the future. 
Thanks LG for sponsoring this video. Learn more about the 32 GQ 950 at the link below. And also, LG Ultra Gear is doing a 24 hour campaign with gamers going live on their new Ultra Gear monitor every hour. Follow their channel as well to find out more. That's not bad. Pretty good. Nice.